Good evening. Good evening. We thank God again for this great day we have had. A beautiful day in that. A nice weather outside. Good time for friends and family and all of us to get together. And always a good time for us to study the Word of God. Psalm 123, for emphasis sake, you'll join me there. Psalm 123, we'll reread verses 1 through verse number 4. Psalm 123, verses 1 through 4, or the entirety of that psalm. When you have it, say amen. amen. All righty, unto thee, lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that He have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud, the lifted eyes. What a blessing, if you will, if we step back and recognize how good our God is, uh, uh, that he's given us the ability to lift up our eyes. Uh, many a times we take for granted uh, these two eyeballs of four, if you wear glasses like me, we take for granted the abilities that we have, the, the pleasure that we have in being able to look up at what our God has created and what our God has done, is doing, but more importantly, what he's promised to do. We are able to look upon all of the majestic creations all around us. So most animals, if you will, are not known to look up, but rather they look down and they look all around, whereas we God's greatest creation have been designed with the knowledge of where our help is, but more importantly, whom our help comes from. But with our eyes of faith, let me emphasize, we are able to penetrate the veil of space as we know it and look to where our help comes from, for our help truly comes from our God. The lifted eyes, brothers and sisters, signifies things in this life. Our lifted eyes signifies reflection. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 100, and let us consider verses 2 and 3. Psalm 100, and the verses are 2 and 3. The Bible says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. As we ponder, if you will, the issues of life, we may seem helpless. But when we look up, we know who rules and we know who's in the blessing business. We signify, we represent reflection when we look up where our help comes from and others are looking all around and looking down. We, we look up because of the goodness of our God. We look up because it reflects what God has done and is doing in our lives. So we look up with lifted eyes because it testifies to our faith. So many times we do things and we don't recognize the impact of what we do. When we look up, we let folk realize without saying a word whom we are dependent upon, whom we are turning to. Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12 and the verses are 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This is what we ought to do. Looking again unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We testify to our faith and about our faith by looking up to Jesus. Man's faith, if you will, is earthly bound. 
The amount of faith that man can have in himself uh, is limited to what's here on earth. Uh, but a Christian's faith uh, has no bounds. Why? Because we learn to look up. We learn to look to our God. We know who has the power to change things, even though it may be that way today. We know who has the power to change things for tomorrow. The limited eyes, brothers and sisters, uh, it bespeaks uh, of obedience. Uh, it allows us to recognize and show uh, whom we obey. Turn with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 46, and let us consider verses 3 down to verse number 5. Jeremiah, again, the chapter is 46, and let us consider verse 3 down to verse number 5. And the Bible reads, Order ye the buckler and shield, draw near to battle, harness the horses and get up, ye horsemen, and stand forth with your helmets, furnish the spears, and put them on the, 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 the brigadines, wherefore have have I seen them dismayed and turned away back, and their mighty ones are beaten down in our fled apace, and look not back, for fear was round about, saith the Lord. We obey our God because we don't look back, we look up. We don't look back because the past is behind us. We look forward and we look up because we recognize who again is in control, but not only that, brothers and sisters, when we look up, it denotes or shows uh, our humility. Oh, we have too many references, my friends, but it, we have to recognize uh, it is manifested in obedient service. Uh, uh, you remember the Bible says, speak, Lord, uh, for your servant listens. Uh, when we look up, we can honestly say, speak, Lord, for I am listening. Whatever you would have me to do, I recognize it book, but when I look to you as my source of help, when I look to you for all that I need, I get the direction that I'm so desirous of. But looking up denotes our humility. Turn with me to Genesis 19. Genesis 19, if you will, and consider verses 24 through verse 26. And the Bible reads, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Listen now, you remember Lot's wife, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of Sodom. What was it? Lot's wife missed so much that she kept her eyes uh, and turned her eyes from the prize uh, to look back. Brothers and sisters, when we look up, when we lift up our eyes, we won't be so distracted, uh, if you will, by the things around us. Uh, too many times we tell folk, well, I'll do what I want to do, and I put forward to you. Lot's wife showed uh, her pride, and pride allows, if you will, or restricts your eyes uh, to see only yourself and vain glory. When we take our eyes off the prize, we lose track of where we are. We lose focus of what we should be focused on. But when we lift up our eyes, we're constantly focused on the Lord. I look forward to you when we consider our world today. When we consider the state of Christianity today, oh no, it's not so bleak, if you will. There is hope because our God, He is alive. And while so many in the world may tell you that there is no hope, we can prove that hope is in our God. That while mankind may change and they continue to change, our God remains the same. The lifted eye, my friends, it allows us to recognize we are in need. You see, because we look to God because we are in need of what God has. So remember, I've shared with you before, I don't want to go to heaven. I need to go to heaven. You see, want means I have another choice in the matter. Need means it's something I expressly desire or I'm going after. I don't want heaven. I need heaven. I've shared with you before and I think we, we are getting closer to having more and more touches of this nice feather, a.k.a. heat. If we don't like the heat here, we definitely don't want to entertain the heat of hell. Therefore, I need to go to heaven. What the Bible says in Hebrews 9. 
Hebrews 9 and the verse is 28. So Christ that once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Who do we look for? Who do we look to with our heads lifted? We are able to look above our circumstances and focus on our faith. You remember how a lily, a lily will grow in the middle of a cesspool because that lily will lift its head above the mess all around it. That lily will rise up above the mess and not rise around it to constrict its growth, but dig its roots way beneath and lift its head up. And if a plant can do it, why can't we? Why can't we recognize what God has in store for us? Why can't we recognize that we don't concentrate so much on what's around us? We look up to know what he is before us. We lift our eyes, brothers and sisters. We denote our hope. Where is your hope this evening? Is your hope in God? Is your hope in His Word? Is your hope that heaven will one day be your home? You see, not only is that our hope, but it's something I pray we are working for. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7 and the verse is 7. The Bible says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. Why? My God will hear me. How many times have we engaged in prayer knowing that God will hear us? How many times have we dealt with a situation knowing that all I must do is leave it in the hands of the Lord? All I must do is turn it over to Him, get it out of our hands and put it in the hands of God. And I understand all of us have been through something where when we turned it over to God, we allowed ourselves to be able to sleep at night. We allowed ourselves to get rid of that worry and stress and those things that cause heartache, if you will. When we turn it over to God, my friends, we look up because we desire and expect things the earth and man cannot begin to supply. We look up to God who is the head supplier. We look up to God who is the head provider. Oh, sometimes when we look up, we see the beauty that our God has. God's love lifts us up. And when his love lifts us up, we might as well look up. Oh, Joe Cocker sang the song. He said, love lifts us up where we belong, where the eagles cry on a mountain high. Love lifts us up where we belong, far from the world below, up where the clear Winds blow. No, I'm not trying to yes, say Joe Parker was an inspiration in any spiritual sense. Uh, while he was thinking and singing uh, of a physical uplift, uh, I put forward to you, we know assuredly that God's spiritual love uh, will do just that if we live as he instructs us uh, and keep our eyes up on the prize. Uh, Oh, isn't it something to know that God's love will lift us up? God's love will take us where we belong. God's love will allow us to witness and know that where we belong is where our soul longs for. Oh, can you imagine that day? Can you imagine that grand day in heaven when we're all gathered there? Uh, if you will, allow your minds to just step out a moment. I don't know how it's going to be. Let's just get there. But if you could, uh, imagine with me, if you will. Can you imagine if we all make it who are saved and we're gathered around that throne? And if uh, we recognize each other, how happy we'll be to be over there. And, you know, you'll say, well, Rico, well, you didn't know if you wouldn't have hair. And you still don't have hair. But guess what? That won't be a concern because we all would have made it over there. And I want you to know, I just want to get there. I just want to get there and witness His majesty. I just want to get there and keep my eyes lifted to the God of heaven. When we can properly see our God, know that so we can more directly and assuredly serve our fellow man. Isn't it something by looking at God, we know how to serve one another. We see and serve by keeping our eyes lifted. Because it's bigger than me, it's bigger than you. It's about the glory that we give to our God. Lift up your eyes from which comes your help. Your help, my help, comes from God who made the
the heavens and the earth. Hope, trust, and pray that we gain an inspiration to keep our focus on the prize, to keep our focus on our God, knowing that He didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't bring us this far to let us alone. No, he brought us here so we can recognize it's because of Him and Him alone. We persevere, we continue to walk the path of faith. If you're present this evening, you're not a member of the Lord's church. I want you to understand you haven't begun to live. You don't know what living is all about because you haven't put your faith, your trust, and confidence in our Lord. You can walk out of here tonight knowing that change has been made in your life. His word requires that we hear his word. Romans chapter 10 and the verse is 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hear what? That Jesus Christ came, he died, he rose the third day while he walked this earth. He laid the foundation for his church, his church, which wears his name, his church, which we must be a member of in order to be saved. Do you believe that? Christmas in his house did. Are you willing to exercise your faith in God and believe his word? If so, are you willing to say, Lord, no longer my will, but thy will be done. It's repentance. Not to do a 360 in life, but a 180. Turning from your way to God's way. Upon that change, my friends, as you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you go down in the watery grave of baptism, rising to live your life faithfully until death. Uh, if you're present this evening, you're a member of the Lord's Church, uh, and you recognize you haven't been lifting your eyes up as you should, no, my friends, we are here to help and encourage uh, one another. Consider yourself, but ultimately consider your soul. As together we stand and sing our song of encouragement.